This is Debbie, and welcome to another brand new episode of The Offbeat Life, where I speak to inspiring individuals who ditch the norm to live their best life and become location independent. This week, I'm so excited to speak with Anit Hora, who is the founder of a vegan apothecary line, Mullen and Sparrow. Before creating her own line of luxury botanical skincare products, Anit started in fashion. Although she enjoyed the creative side of fashion, she realized it was not the industry she wanted to be in. While traveling solo in South America, Anit was exposed to holistic practices that led her to study herbal medicine once she returned from her travels. Anit recognized the need for botanical skincare lines when clients were demanding natural skincare products and makeup. Today, Anit continues to grow her business and has recently rebranded Mullen and Sparrow. Listen on to find out how travel led Anit to a journey of self discovery and so much more. for joining us today. Hi, Debbie. I'm so excited to be here and I can't wait to start. (laughs) I'm so excited to speak with you too. So can you fill in the gaps of your story and why you live an offbeat life? Sure. Um, So my name is Anit Hora. I'm the founder of two skincare brands, msskincare.co and nanaka.co. And I actually started my journey uh, many years ago as a fashion designer who decided that even though she loved her job, there was something more out there. And I decided to quit my job and go backpacking in South America for a year with no plans, didn't know anyone, didn't know what I was going to do. And uh, I just, I lived very a very nomadic life for a while and I came back and I wasn't sure what to do. So I started my own company and now I've been doing it for six years. What made you decide to go into the skincare products instead of other things? I also saw that you graduated from FIT, the Fashion Institute of Technology. So that's a little different from (laughs) what you had set out to do initially. Since I was 13, I wanted to be a fashion designer. So I knew I was going to FIT. Uh, Once I graduated FIT, I worked as a designer for about seven years Loved it. I really did love it. But I think more than the design part, I just loved the creativity part of it. So um, that's what made me realize that maybe it wasn't specifically fashion design that I needed to be in, but just something more creative. That's what, you know, when I started traveling and backpacking, I remember getting sick on um, a trip, like one of my trips, because I was down there and I would, you know, I would stay in places and then I would go on these little mini trips. And I remember getting really sick. And as like a, you know, very New York person, I just went up to the pharmacy and basically demanded antibiotics. I'm like, I need antibiotics. <laughs> and they're like, um, I don't, we don't just give those out. Do you have a fever? Like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, I'm really sick and I need to go on this trip. And, you know, you guys are stopping me. And, <laughs> and they just, they finally relented, but I realized that down there, it's more about self-care. They actually want you to take the time to rest, to be, you know, to actually heal your body. And that's what made me realize, I'm like, wait, when I was younger, my mom used to do stuff like this. I just, it all got lost in my, I was a very ambitious, uh, career driven person and I just all got lost in there and so I, I started to, to live more slowly and I realized that my body was doing better and I didn't get sick as often, you know, and I learned to like drink more herbal teas and it all just took me back to um, growing up with my mom and my dad. They used to do, you know, like now that whole the turmeric latte, the golden latte is a big thing, but um, it's to me, it's the most disgusting thing in the world because <laughs> my my parents made me drink it every time I was sick when I was growing up. Did it work? <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know if it worked or I'm going to say it did. It definitely helped because it is an anti-inflammatory thing. You know, I just have memories of all of that. And when I came back, I wanted to do something more natural and more pure. And I wasn't sure that it was going to go into skincare. Um, I wanted to do more herbal medicine sort of thing. Um, 
And that's what I did. I, I studied herbal medicine with a lot of people in New York for many years. But I also went to the Aveda Institute because I, then I realized I'm like, oh, I can make interesting products that are truly natural, that are anti-inflammatory, that do work. So that's where the skincare came in. I, um, I went to school for it after I came back. And then I worked in a great spa. I worked in great spas and I worked on like amazing clientele for about five years, I think, before I started the line. So I, you know, I got this, this second education and I, I, in a second career, um, just because it was something I was like passionate about and it, you know, it didn't make sense at the time, but now when I look back on it, it all makes sense. All my choices make sense. It's kind of crazy how and where your life leads you just from traveling <laughs> yeah, and then needing something and then realizing that you need to do this for yourself because you're not seeing it in the country that you're from. And then also learning that from your family and what they were doing. So th it's a pretty incredible journey for you starting as a fashion designer and then going into skincare it's pretty great <laughs> yeah it felt you know it felt more natural than it sounds it sounds like it was um you know like this big leap of faith but when I was doing it it just felt so natural to me and I did see that I wanted to, to create the types of products that don't exist and to be perfectly honest my company didn't start out as only skincare we started out as a true wellness company we used to make a lot of tinctures and teas and salves and herbal syrups. That's when I um that's what the company started at as an and as I was selling to more women, they kept asking for more natural beauty products. So it naturally evolved. But now I feel like, you know, back then in like 2011, 2012, people thought all the natural um medicines was sort of weird, but now I'm seeing it everywhere. So I kind of feel like maybe it was a little ahead of its time back then. But now if I brought it back, I think it would do really well. So um, I think the whole healing aspect and the whole natural medicine aspect, which is something natural um, that evolved without me having to think too much about it. And I, I, I think sometimes that happens in life where, you know, you're thinking what I should do next, but things just come and you just have to follow them. It's just following your natural instincts as well and not forcing things. So that's it, whatever's perfect for, for you and what you want and what's happening in your life as well, which is really interesting when you just go where it leads you and you'd be surprised where it does. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was surprised where it led me. You know, if you had met me in my 20s, I was such a huge like you know you know one of those ambitious New York career women just like ready to go 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 <laughs> yeah um, and, there's so many of them here <laughs> you know it's the energy of the city which I love I grew up here but um now I'm like I'm way more relaxed and I don't know if it's because you know what I do or maybe it's because I'm getting older but all of it just makes more sense now like this you know kind of letting things happen being a little slower it's okay <laughs> I was talking to a few of my friends here. We're all from New York City. And whenever somebody asks you a question like, what have you been up to? The first thing that we always say is work. There's so much work. I'm so stressed from work. But then it's kind of like a badge of honor in some, some way when you're working so much, especially here in New York. And now rethinking that and being like, well, if I'm working too much, then I'm not doing something right. I really need to <laughs> do something else besides work because that's not how life should really be about. <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely um, correct about this. I am very guilty of this thing. Of Anytime somebody calls me, the first thing I talk about, oh my God, I'm so busy. I'm working on this project and that project. <laughs> And the projects, you know, they don't seem to end, but I, I really feel like people here, we thrive on that. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's all like, oh my God, I'm doing so much. I'm like really doing something. <laughs> what I'm finding out is when I actually back off, I, I make space for more amazing things to come or more amazing opportunities. And I think sometimes we have to remember that. And it's so hard for us to remember that, that like, oh my God, I can take a day off. And those, those will be the days when I'm like, oh my God, the New York Times called me. Like, how did that happen? You know, I'm like, because I'm making space for it. And I truly believe that. Like, if you really want something, maybe it's okay to make some space for it. Really, if you're so busy that it can't come to you, then you're missing out on so many great things. So that's a really good perspective on it. Now, Ani, you have done so much already. What has been the biggest setback that you have encountered and how do you usually handle them? 
scaling and growing have been really tough for us because I started this company more as an instinctual dream versus, you know, like here's a, here's a business and here's a business plan and here's my five-year projection. I mean, I eventually did all these things, but when I first started, it was just something I really wanted to do. So I didn't have any funding and I didn't have any resources. I started this all by myself. And when it got, you know, when we got opportunities to grow, that was a little bit challenging for us because I didn't have the funding. I didn't have anyone. I didn't have a network. I just had to figure a lot of that out myself. And, you know, a lot of it was Googling like, oh my God, let's find a manufacturer who can do this. Let's find somebody who can help me up my um, packaging design. And all of those things went initially were really, really hard. But, you know, we figured it out and we're able to grow and we're able to scale. But I remember in the beginning when you're an entrepreneur and you don't know anybody, it's really tough because it can be a very lonely existence for a while. It's always an uphill battle when it comes to that. And you're constantly networking aside from actually creating the product and everything else and marketing. There's so much to do. <laughs> and then sometimes we just spend so much time on it that we don't have time for ourselves and I think that's the one thing as an entrepreneur as freelancers is that before we get into it we don't realize how much it actually sucks up everything and the energy that it takes away from us that's why self-care and taking the time away that you you know we talked about is so important to all of that yeah, I mean, I based a company out of it. <laughs> um, <laughs> doing all the crazy things, nobody understands, um, unless you're an entrepreneur, and then you definitely understand. <laughs> it's really, really tough to do this, to decide to start a company, to decide you want to do all of these things, because then, you know, there are certain things that maybe you don't like, like managing the staff, or, um, you know, there's so many things, or answering like 500 emails a day, because you're going to have to. <laughs> There's so many like little moving parts that people don't talk about and, and the mental strain it takes on you. Um, even if you're not working, working physically, it's, it's hard to turn your brain off when you have a business and that, you know, just the whole entrepreneurship game is its own thing. Um, and I feel like it, that's why it's good to have a community that you can talk to because if you just talk to your normal friends who don't do this, I can pretty much guarantee you're not going to have any friends left. <laughs> No, because they won't understand why you're always talking about this. I think that's one of the biggest things too to have to keep you sane for sure is to have a good community and support around you who are understanding of the industry, not necessarily the same one as you have, but like you said, like entrepreneurs or freelancers who will get the struggle for sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's just something it's so important. And I didn't realize it for many years when I was doing this. And I did kind of, uh, let's just say, push some of my friends away because they were so sick of hearing about my production problems or, you know, my shipping woes with FedEx and UPS. And it was just, it's just been an interesting journey, I, I that to say the least. What has been the biggest lesson that you have learned that you wished you knew before going into this business and being an entrepreneur? Number one, it's very lonely. So be ready for that because a lot of times when you're when you just have a concept and you're just trying to build it out you are going to spend a lot of time by yourself so if you're a really social person be ready for that it, it does take a toll on your personal life and just honestly I didn't know how hard it is um, I know everyone always talks about how great it is and it is really great it is so exciting to build something to see something that you've created but it's very tough. I wish I'd known the importance of a good team from the beginning. I did not. And it, it took me a few years to get there to find people who have the same values as I do and to find good partners that you work with because that's another thing. Not everyone has the same work ethic as you. So you, it's really important to find people that align in all these ways so that you are living the dream that you want to live and you're not constantly fighting with these little things because these little things, they can turn into huge obstacles. That's just something I've had to learn the hard way. I definitely agree with you on that, is finding the people that you can work well with. And it's really hard to do. <laughs> it is really hard to do because, you know, one thing is that it's your baby. Like, you want it to be perfect, but not everyone else is going to see it that way. 
So yeah, it's hard to find someone who's going to work just as hard as you on something. And then also it's hard. Like I'm not an HR person. I don't know how to recruit people. I don't know what kinds of questions to ask. I wish I could say, oh, I'm a great, you know how people are like, oh, I can read people very easily. Well, I can't. <laughs> so, <laughs> and that's, I didn't know that until I started a company. So <laughs> that was not part of your talent. <laughs> that's definitely not part of my talent. No. <laughs> So when you were trying to find the right people to help you with your business, how did you do that? Honestly, it was trial and error because I get very excited about my product when I talk about it, when I'm interviewing. And I feel like sometimes I see that excitement reflected back at me and I'm like, that's a good fit. But that's <laughs> not you know, necessarily true. Momentary excitement does not um, a good employee make. It's been so hard for me. I didn't find anyone to help me. Like maybe I should have. Now that you're saying it, see <laughs> collaboration. Now that you're saying it, I'm like, oh, an HR person would have been a good idea. But I just went trial and error. And sometimes people would recommend people that had helped them out. And you know, because a lot of it when I was starting out was just temporary work. It was just seasonal stuff because my company was so small. But yeah, it, I mean, it's been tough. There, there have been some good people along the way. It really just has been trial and error. So if somebody is trying to find the right person for their company or an assistant, maybe what's the one thing that you say you should look for when you're looking for someone? So this is hard to know about someone unless they're there. Um, but I guess a lot of companies have the 30 day, um, 30 day trial period and things like that. I think work ethic is really important to me. You know, I like to see that. I like to see, especially in young people, um, just like this desire and this will to, to go above and beyond because I certainly had it when I was a young designer. And that's something I look for. Like, are they going to complain if you're like, oh my God, we have to do this one thing and it's, you know, a major, major thing for a major store and we all have to work over the weekend. And you have to see their attitude and see if they're like, oh my God, this is so exciting. Obviously we have to do it. Or if they're like, oh, I was supposed to go out with my friends. Like like little things like that. I've noticed um, if they show you that in the beginning, I think you know uh, what you're dealing with. It's really unfortunate because there's a lot of people out there who just don't want to work. Sometimes they're even pissed off that they're working. So... <laughs> Yeah, I know. I didn't know this. But yes, you're absolutely right. So I don't know. I'm trying to think of myself as a young, young person with my first job and all of those things. But I don't remember being this way. So it was very, um, <laughs> very surprising to see how little people can care. <laughs> you know? It's not actually that hard to to notice the differences from people like with the attitudes and you can see especially when they start working for you you know if you are looking for a job <laughs> don't do that don't be pissed off that you actually have work you're very fortunate that you're getting a paycheck and if exactly. you're yeah and if you're excited about the product that's going to get you even further <laughs> yeah and that that's what I think and that's uh, that's another tip that I realized that now that we've been doing this for a few years, this is very interesting. I haven't had to put out a want, you know, wanted ad for a while. I get a lot of um, resumes just sent to me, just blindly sent to me, which I really love because I know this person is already passionate about the product. So yeah, like a lot of, you know, young women in school, just random people who found the company and they, they're starting out and, they, and, and you know, it's, it's lovely to see that, to get those types of letters where they're like, oh my God, I love your company. I really want to work for you. So I think things are getting better because just the fact that we've been around for a while. Yeah. And it's great to see people take initiative to do that. You know? Yeah, I love that. I think it's kind of it's so brave to just write a company. <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh, my God, that's amazing. <laughs> and I feel lucky because I hate putting out wanted ads. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> saves you time. Saves me time. I'm like, all right, well, I know you have the passion for the company. So at least one thing is um, OK yeah, there. It's there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Annie, you talked about self-financing this business at the start. Now, how do you continue to create income from this company now? That's interesting because uh, we've been just using our own funds. When when we say we, I mean I because it's just me who's doing it. Um, you are the company. Uh, I'm the company. I have some people who work for me. But yeah, there's no like executive board or anything like that. <laughs> Not yet. Well, don't um, say that. Make it, yes. you know, you're the yeah. CEO. And <laughs> yeah. No, I know. But I, you know, since it's a, you know, I want women to know the real struggles too. I, you know, I don't want to make it sound like this glamorous life that I'm leading. <laughs> I, 
Um, I wish it was, but I, I continue to self fund this and, you know, we get bigger projects and then we use the money from that and it just keeps, it's like a cycle that keeps going. It is, that is definitely, I would not recommend that to anybody. Um, it's just the, that's just the way it's been for us and we've been okay doing it. I would suggest for people who can, and you have a really solid business plan and you're ready to go to seek outside funding or like a low cost loan from, you know, the SBA or something. I think those really good tools that can help you. We do have a line of credit that we got from our bank, but it's not, it's nothing major. Um, I will be seeking additional funding. And right now, um, if that's, you know, just, I let this company just organically grow. It's just been the journey where I haven't, I mean, I pitch a lot and stuff, and but I think I do that as an, a female entrepreneur just because um, it's good to get yourself out there and be seen by different kinds of people. But I haven't seriously looked for outside funding yet, but I think I will because it's hard to grow past a certain level without it. Speaking as a female entrepreneur, what has it been like? What has been your experiences? For me, it just feels natural because it's something I want to do. But it's so funny um, when you go to any kind of networking event or just when I tell people I own um, a company, it, the, it, you know, it's not it's not taken as seriously as if a guy next to me says he owes, owns a company. It's just really funny to me how these perceptions of people are if, I, if I'm going to an event and I, if I say I own a skincare company, the first thing people will ask me is like, Oh, that's so cute. Is it out of your kitchen? But if, <laughs> um, and if a guy next to me says the same thing, they're like, Oh, if he says, Oh, I own a skincare company. The first thing they'll ask him is, Oh, where is it manufactured? Are you manufacturing in the U S or in China? You know? And I've noticed that. And it's so strange. I'm like, so you automatically assume that he's way more established, you know, has, domestic and or international <laughs> facilities. But for me, sweet little me, I'm still in my kitchen, <laughs> you know? So a few years ago, I had a company that I no longer run it, but I would go to events just like you're talking about. And I would say back then, you know, I, I'm now I'm in my 30s. And when I had that company, I was in my 20s. So they would be like, what do you do? And I would tell them, I own this company. And they're like, wait, you're the owner of the company you're kidding right somebody actually said no that's not true I'm like yes and they're like how old are you and I was in my mid-20s and they were like no that that can't be right they actually asked me two or three times <laughs> right and you're just like are you serious like, what, what year is it like what's wrong with you <laughs> you know <laughs> I know isn't that so strange that we still get asked these very like antiquated questions yeah and you know, people, even women ask me that. I know, I know, women, I know, that's so baffling <laughs> to me, where I'm not, I mean, I'm in my late 30s, and yeah. women are still like, oh my god, but you're so young, and I'm like, really, like, what does it take, you know what I mean? We can do this too, not just men, we need to empower ourselves, so exactly. <laughs> assume that every female you meet in that event is an entrepreneur and they're CEOs of their own company. <laughs> exactly, I'm like, you know, it's, it's okay, you can say a woman is a CEO, it doesn't have to be, um, I don't know how to even explain what, what <laughs> that is, but I know what you're talking about, yeah. it seems incredulous, you know, you're like, no, this isn't true. <laughs> yeah. And then I would be there with uh, my partner, with my boyfriend. They would um, automatically assume he owned the company. I was like, no, he was just helping me out. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's, I know. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> that is, yeah. If I ever have my brother or something with me, I'm like, oh my God, they all think he's the owner. And I, you know, I'm just here. I don't know what they think I do. You're, you're his assistant. <laughs> yeah. Or just even sometimes I've had male employees and these are guys who are helping me with shipping. And people just assume that they own the company. <laughs> so it's, it's, I know. It's funny, but it's also really sad at the same time. Yeah, I think it's, I'm going for sad now. I think it's sad. <laughs> I think it's great that there are, you know, a lot of female entrepreneurs out there and we're just, we're not stopping and we're not going to stop and we're not backing down from this. And I think that's really important because for the next generation of women, uh, young women out there, it's, I think they need to see people that look like them in leadership positions. I think that's really important. And also for me being a woman of color, I think that's really important too. Because when I was growing up, I didn't see people that looked like me yeah. here, you know, and you, even, even though I lived in New York, like 
you didn't see women of um, color in power positions. It just it didn't exist, and you didn't see them on TV, <laughs> and you didn't, you know. And now I I think representation does matter. I think first of all, like all women need to see women in leadership uh, roles. I think that's very important. But number two, like young girls like me who are growing up here, hey, I exist. You can see, you know, look up to me. It's okay. <laughs> Well, that's why it's so good to have someone like you and me and other female entrepreneurs out there who are really going forward with it and not letting letting anything stop them. And any if anything, whenever you get that question, own it and be proud of it and be like, there's more of us now. So this is great. <laughs> yeah. And I love seeing I love seeing that. I love seeing the diversity. I love seeing all kinds of women, you know, no matter what kind of company you own. I love that you have the guts to go out and do it. I think that's just for young girls to see that, like, you know, it's okay to be brave and it's okay to fail. It's okay to change your mind about what what you're going to do. Because, you know, like I was torn when I um, changed my career and I think that's okay. Like, you know, men are given a lot of chances to do do do-overs and I feel like young women are not. And I think it's okay to just do over your life as many times as you want to because it's your life. Yeah, we're so hard on ourselves, especially... We're not meant, I don't believe we're meant to just do one thing in our lives. And we learn so many different things and you could change careers as much as you want to. But if you really love that one thing, then you keep going with it if that's what you really want to do. Exactly. It's your choice. That's the whole point is that you have choices and feel free to make the same one or different ones. It's the whole, it's entirely up to you. Yeah. So let's fast forward to 50 years from now and you're looking back at your life. What legacy would you like to leave and what do you want to be remembered for? 50 years from now, I would like to look back and I think one of the things that I really love is um, I want people to just, you know, that she went for it. Nothing could stop her. That is something I find very exciting in people (laughs) and I, I look up to a lot in people, people who just against all odds just went for it and did what they wanted to do. Just a whole no regrets thing. So I want people to to just have, like she just went for it. She wanted to create a company and so she did it. And I'm hoping the company will grow into this amazing thing. And I really think it will. So that's what I want to remember for. Just, I don't even know how to say that. Just not ambition because that, you know, a lot of people have ambitions, just true grit, you know? Yeah, Like absolutely. you can't, yeah, unstoppable. <laughs> You're already doing it and you're on the way to creating this even more incredible company. So I'm sure that's 50 years from now, we'll see all of that. The fruits of all the labor and the grit that you've been putting out there. (laughs) I certainly hope so, because uh, let me tell you, it's been very gritty. (laughs) (laughs) It's not all pretty like what they tell you. You know, I only get the good stuff on social media and on the Internet, but it's hard. It's hard work. I know. I know. I wish we would all post. I mean, I don't want to be the only one that's like the Debbie Downer on Instagram. (laughs) This sucks. I'm talking to UBS for seven hours today. (laughs) Well, actually, that's what people need to hear, guys. That's what we all do here (laughs) I know I'm like today was a sweatpants day again (laughs) that's pretty much every day (laughs) yeah like I know it doesn't look that way but trust me (laughs) so let's get to some fun questions some people like myself I nerd out on interviewing inspiring people like you and hiking what about you and what do you nerd out on besides beauty products (laughs) um okay well I'm super nerdy um I I love reading um that's something I've loved since I was a child And I always have a pile of books that I'm ready to like, you know, whenever I have a a down moment, that's what I want to be doing. I just want to be reading everything in sight. And uh, what else do I nerd out on? I love music. I, you know, I'm old now because all the stuff that I like is classic rock. I'm like, but that's like from the nineties. Totally. It makes sense that that's classic rock now. Um, And I don't know, like I, so I live in Williamsburg and I just love walking around. I mean, when the tourists are not here, I love walking (laughs) around and I, you can usually find me in the park with a book sitting, even when it's cold out, sometimes I'll just go sit for a few minutes and read. To me, that's just like a, something I really love. That sounds really relaxing. (laughs) It is. I know. You know what I really got into uh, now? One of my friends, another entrepreneur, he recommended it to me because I'm like, you know, I don't have as much time to read as I used to. 
And he's like, oh my God, audiobooks. <laughs> and I was so resistant at first. I'm like, no, that's not the same thing. Like, I don't think that's cool. But now I, I have, I mean, I walk to work and I listen to books. It's kind of fun. <laughs> I love audiobooks, especially when you're driving, you could listen to anything you want. <laughs> exactly. And it's so nerdy. I listen to all these, um, they're, I don't know if they're self-help books, but they're like entrepreneur self-help books. Yeah. You know, I listen to those all the time and I walk to work and I get to work and I'm like, yeah, we can all do this. <laughs> and like, oh my God, what's wrong with you? People are looking at you like you're crazy. Like what's yeah, wrong with Yeah. You? They're like, they're like, okay, yeah, put that like, audio book down. Like, what are you, what are you listening to now? But on but, the yeah. other hand, this is New York City. So people are just, okay, that's normal. <laughs> So, Ani, having traveled to so many different places, what has been the most life-changing meeting with an individual that you've ever encountered? I don't know if it's one person that's done it for me, but I think, so when I first started out, you know, um, I was alone. Uh, I mean, I was alone the whole time, but I, I just didn't know how to travel alone. I think the thing that really excited me or I finally got was, and this is going to sound super cheesy, but, you know, I did tell you already that I listen to self-help books, um, <laughs> that the universe really does look out for you. Uh, because I remember I backpacked, I started out in Brazil and I backpacked for three months and it was very cool. And I got to Argentina and I was, uh, I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I was kind of a little bit tired of just like going from place to place um, every day or every few days. And I wanted to kind of settle, but I didn't, I didn't even know that's what I wanted. I was, I was just feeling a little tired. And I met uh, someone at a hostel who um, was like, oh, I'm, I'm like going to stay here for a while. And I have these, he was studying tango. And he told me he had these tango teachers that had a house in Buenos Aires where we were. And he was, uh, that they needed someone to like house sit for six months. Oh, wow. And he just asked me to be his roommate for free, no obligations. <laughs> and I, I was like, this can't be true. And all of a sudden I now had a free place to live in Buenos Aires and then I went to school. Um, I wanted to learn Spanish because I did not speak any Spanish. I thought I did because I took it in high school. But when I got there, I'm like, oh, my God. Like, I have no idea what anyone's saying. And I didn't want to be that kind of traveler that didn't actually talk to the locals. <laughs> so um, I went and I, I started taking Spanish classes. And I met a girl who was an American girl. And she's like, you know what? I just got this job. But I used to, I used to teach English to a lot of executives. Do you want my old job? Within a few days, I had a house, I had a job, I was volunteering, I met some kids, I was a volunteer art teacher, and I'm like, oh my god, if you just let it, the universe just puts things in place for you, <laughs> you know, and I think that's what, that was so life-changing for me, because now, I, you know, when things, I'm like, oh my god, I really can't do this, sometimes I back off and let things happen. Yeah, it's when you're not pushing anything, you're not doing anything, but just accepting that's when it all comes to you, which is really interesting. <laughs> yeah. And that I, but you know, because I'd been so go, go, go in New York, I don't think I would have understood that yeah. unless I got lost in South America, you know, just kind of let myself wander and like, let the house come to me and let the job come to me and let the volunteer opportunities, they just came to me. And I kept doing that throughout my travels. Um, I ended up living in Buenos Aires for six months, which I, you know, wasn't, I didn't have a plan. So that was interesting. When I went to other cities, like I knew it'd be probably, I could probably find work easily and I didn't have to stress so much about it. And I think that that's important. Yeah. And also make sure to listen to Anit's extended interview because she's going to talk more about solo female travel. So that's going to be really exciting. Now, Anit, what are you working to, on today that's really exciting to you? Well, right now we are in the middle of a rebrand. So that has been taking up all of my time. It took a really long time to get there because you know, we did it ourselves, like we did it without major capital or anything. So that's why it was such a slow process. I've been talking about this rebrand for over a year, but, <laughs> but it's almost here. I promise it's here. Um, yeah, it's, um, we're just putting some final touches on our website and it should be ready to launch soon. Um, yeah, I'm so sad it came out so late in the year, but you know what? It's better late than never. So yeah. if our listeners want to know more about you, where can they find you? You know, on my website, there's, um, that's when you'll know what I'm working on the most. What's your website? Um, msskincare.co and then it's uh, nanaka, which is N-A-N-A-K-A dot co. Perfect. Thank you so much, Anit, for talking to us today. I really appreciate you sharing your incredible journey with us. Thank you, Debbie. This is so great. I hope you enjoyed this interview with Anit. 
make sure to visit theoffbeatlife.com. Again, that's theoffbeatlife.com to get the extended interview with Anit where she shares how to get the courage to be a lone traveler. Hey, Offbeat family. I really appreciate you listening to this episode. I would love to hear more from you and what you think of the podcast. Suggestions on guests, topics we can discuss, or maybe you just want to be friends. Why don't we chat some more on Facebook at The OB Life or send me a message at hello at theoffbeatlife.com. I can't wait to hear from you.